Hi everyone! How are you today? I'm doing good. I have a couple more days with my little um, bandage on. I can't wait to get it off. It's just been so very hot, but my hand feels better, so that's a good thing. Um, and that's what I know. So, I'm going to start out today a little bit differently than I usually do. I'm going to start out today with our sentences that we have been working on. What is a sentence? If you remember, a sentence is a complete thought, one complete thought. A sentence has words. They all have words. Those are all words. They have spaces between the words. Well, I see spaces, okay? They have punctuation at the end, which can be a period, a question mark, or an excited mark or an exclamation mark, and they should begin with an uppercase letter. Okay? So, our first one today is a group of words that says, what day is it? Is it a sentence? Is it a complete thought? Sounds like it is. What day is it? I want to know what day it is. Does it have words? Yes. One, two, three, four. Does it have spaces between the words? Yes. One, two, three. Does it end with a punctuation mark? Yes. In this case, it's a question mark. It requires an answer. It requires an answer. I want to know what day is it? In? What day is it? Does it begin with an uppercase? There it is. That's our little mistake there today. No, it does not. We need an uppercase W to fix it, to make it a sentence. Sorry, I can't write very well. That's an uppercase W, just in case, you know, you don't know. It's not a very good one, but it's hard to write still. Okay, next one. It is Monday. Is that a complete thought? Yes, it is. Now I'm answering my question. What day is it? It is Monday. It is a complete thought. Yes, it is. Does it have words? Yes, it does. One, two, three words. Does it have spaces between the words? Yes, it does. One, two. Does it begin with an uppercase letter? Yes, in this case it does. Uppercase I. Does it have a punctuation mark at the end? No. Okay, so we're just going to put a period there. It's Monday. Today is Monday. It is Monday. Now, third group of words. Happy Monday, everyone. Does it got um, words in it? Yes, it does. Happy Monday and everyone. Three words. Are there spaces between the words? Yes, there are. When we don't have enough space for a word at the end here, because this board isn't long enough, we drop down to the next line. So that's what I did there. Happy Monday, everyone. Does it begin, oh, is it a complete thought? Yes, it is. I'm wishing you a happy Monday. Does it begin with an uppercase? Ah, no, it doesn't. We need an uppercase H there. Hopefully my uppercase H will turn out better than my uppercase W. There we go. Happy Monday, everyone. Does it have a punctuation mark? Yes, it does. It has an exclamation mark or an excited mark. So we don't just say, Happy Monday, everyone. We say, Happy Monday, everyone. So there you go. Today is Monday. Monday, June 8th already. So we've got some dots to add and a number to write. Do you remember the rhyme for number 8? It's a good one. Make an S and don't be late. Hurry back up to make an 8. There you go. So make an S. There's that letter S. And don't be late. Hurry back up to make an 8. Now we need to add some dots here because we don't have 8 dots in our tens frame. We only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How many more dots do you think we need to make the number 8? Let's see. We have 5. Let me show you 5. Five. One, two, three, four, five. So can you guess, do we need two dots? 
Five dots? Four dots? What do you think? Well, let's see. Five, six, seven, eight. So how many more do we need? Three. We need three more dots. One, two, three. Now let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So five plus three is equal to eight. That's how to compose that number. We could also say we could use the bottom line first and we could go three plus five equals eight. Means the same thing. Means the same thing. So today is Monday, June 8th. It's Monday, Monday, Monday. Nah, doesn't work. Not as good as our, you know, Friday song. So anyway, <clears throat> I had a really nice weekend. I went over to social distance with some friends on Friday night. And then Saturday was kind of a boring day. I did take Annie for a walk. I can't handle both girls on with the with this hand. Um and then yesterday, Mr. Larry and I took a hike, and it was beautiful. And then we went over to some friend's house and social distance again. So it was quite nice. So today I'm back to, you know, just doing regular stuff. I've got some laundry to do and some dog hair to vacuum up. And anyway, I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, lots going on in the world. We're still sort of under part of a quarantine. Um, we're going into phase two of our opening so a few more things are open to us um, I really haven't been out there yet because I don't want to take my hand out too much but um, anyway this week on Thursday and Friday Miss Des and I are going to meet at school and we're going to see Miss Joanne and of course we're going to have our masks on and we're going to get your stuff out of the classroom so there you go. Um, probably next week someday we'll schedule a drive-by so that we can see you and wave to you all. No hugs. No hugs. I'm sorry. Maybe we'll schedule a day during the summer where we get to actually give you a hug and whatnot. Because we miss you. Both me and Miss Des, we miss you a lot. We miss being in school with you. Although our school year would technically be over. Um, so we wouldn't be in school anymore. It would be summer vacation. But because we've been all doing this social distancing stuff, our school year is lasting just a teensy bit longer. So anyway, <clears throat> I have a story for you. <coughs> Pardon me, my allergies again. So this story is, is called, it's called Creole. And this story is about a creature. Let's see if I can get that there, creature and a little alligator. Let me see if I can get that light any better. Oh, I'm constantly struggling with these lights. There, that might be good, except for the shine. Creole. And <clears throat> this is an old book, and it was written by Stephen Cosgrove. Now, you may remember him because he's the one who wrote Leo the Lop which the Leo the Lop book is still downstairs waiting to be taped back together because it had a unfortunate incident when it blew off my deck and all the pages fell out. So um, anyway, so this is another one written by um, Stephen Cogsgrove at Cog Cosgrove and it's illustrated by Robin James and um, this story is it's a good story it can teach everybody a lesson so whether you're big or whether you're small it doesn't matter you can get a lesson out of this book so one foggy foggy morning in the land of the swamp from a battered speckled egg see the egg Creole was born in it by a swamp in a swamp actually near the water those are cattails cat o nine tails and some pretty wild flowers in a swamp generally people don't live in swamps except for the swamp people she was big fat and very very ugly she's the kind of creature that I would say she's so ugly she's cute 
I think she's kind of cute, actually. I don't think she's that ugly. She had warts on her fingers and warts on her toes. Those are those nubby things right there, warts. You might have one on a finger or a toe. Um, bony pointed knees and a big flat nose. See, here's her bony pointed knees and a big flat nose. She kind of looks like a duck. Beneath all of that, which made her so ugly, was the most beautiful heart that had ever beat anywhere in the world. Because of her beautiful heart, Creole thought the most beautiful thoughts that could ever be thought. She must be kind of magical, I think. She thought of happiness, for her heart was full of happiness. And she thought of tenderness, for she was the gentlest of all creatures. Day in and day out, she would sit alone, sniffing the flowers and talking to the trees that grew in the swamp. Boy, she sounds a lot like me. I talk to the flowers, the trees, the birds, the animals. I, The flowers, I talk to them all. <clears throat> I don't have the happiness in my heart all the time, and I'm not always the gentlest of people, but I try, you know. One day, she was sitting near a large magnolia tree. Maybe I should share my love and happiness with the other creatures of the swamp. So with that in mind, she set off to find some animals that could become her friends. I don't know what kind of an animal she is. She almost looks like a dinosaur or a dragon of sorts. But anyway, I think she's cute. As noisy as that swamp could be with all the animals living there, it would fall into a silent hush when Creole walked by. The birds became quiet. The possum sat still, and the alligators all slipped away. They all thought that because she was so fat and ugly, she had to be mean, too. Now, remember the other day, um, we read that story about Jack, Jack and the Beanstalk, and that giant was very big and very ugly, but he was also very mean. But there are people in this world that are very big and very ugly, but they're very kind people. There's also people in this world who are beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful people. Their faces are beautiful, their bodies are perfect, they're wonderful, but they have a nasty heart. I would much rather be friends with a big ugly person who has a very kind heart than somebody who looks perfect and is very mean. Creole looked and looked, but she could not find a friend at all. Well, how do you think that made her feel? She looks very sad to me. Finally, with watermelon-sized tears falling at her feet, watermelon-sized tears, not just little tears streaming down, watermelon-sized tears. Falling at her feet, she sat with a heavy thump on a big old bro broken stump and cried and cried. Why won't anyone listen to me, she sobbed. The only thing I want in the whole world is to just have someone to tell my happy thoughts to. Well, doesn't that make you feel better? to tell your happy thoughts to people, to have people listen to you, it makes you feel important like you're a person too. I like that. The tears rolled over her cheeks, bounced off her belly, and finally landed with a large, oh, slipped and slid down the log, and finally landed with a large kerplunk on the head of a baby alligator sitting just below. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think that alligators are the cutest animals that ever walk the face of the earth. Plus, they're big, and plus, they're mean. But the reason why they're mean is because they're just trying to eat like everybody else. So they find food where they can find food. It's kind of the circle of life. If you remember the Lion King, it's the circle of life. Alligators are put on this earth to find food. That's what they do. 
they still are big and they still are mean and they have very big teeth. You have to be careful when you're around alligators. Well, the little alligator looked around to see who had been throwing water on him when suddenly, from above, came another large tear. Kerplunk! He looked up, way up, and saw Creole. Now look how small this baby alligator is, and look how big her foot is. Now I've seen baby alligators about this long. I don't know how big they are when they're born, but that might be a question you can Google with mom and dad. I don't know how big baby animals are when they're born. Annie Dumuffin just came in for a little pat. She's wagging her tail here. Why are you crying on me, stuttered the alligator. Creole looked down and spied the smallest, most pathetic alligator she had ever seen. I'm sorry, she sobbed. I didn't know you were down there. The last thing I wanted to do in the whole world was to hurt someone. Wiping a tear from her eye, Creole suddenly realized that the little alligator had not run away and was actually talking with her. Why didn't you run away like everyone else? asked Creole. Because I hope you will be my f friend, stuttered the alligator. The other alligators all laugh at me because I stutter and can't talk straight. They looked into each other's eyes and realized that they were what each of them was looking for. What do you think that was? A friend. For the longest time, Creole and her newfound friend sat and shared their friendship. After a while, Creole said, it's too bad you and I don't have more friends. I wonder what we could do to convince the other creatures not to laugh at you and to not be afraid of me. The little alligator nodded his head in agreement, and the two of them tried to figure out a way to talk with the other animals of the swamp. Oh, here they're sharing ideas. They're what we call brainstorming. How can we do this? How can we be friends to other animals so they can be friends to us? I know what we shall do, Creole said. I can hide behind a big bush and you can stand in front. And when all the other animals are gathered round, I'll tell you what to say. Then you can talk about love and happiness. Well, the little alligator reluctantly agreed. That means he wasn't quite sure about this plan. And with Creole hidden behind a lilac bush, he nervously called to the other animals. A couple of times he got so scared he tried to hide, but each time she would gently shove him back out and tell him not to be afraid. Well, that's what friends do. Don't be afraid. I'm here. I'm with you. Don't be afraid. That's also what God does. Don't be afraid. I'm here. I'm big. I'm strong. I'm mighty. I'm with you. And teachers and mommies and daddies do the same things. We're with you. We're standing behind you. We know you can do it. <clears throat> now, the other animals of the swamp, not seeing Creel around, knew it was safe to come out and listen to all that the little alligator had to say. And I see, like, there's a heron here and a couple of snakes and some more alligators and some little birds and it looks like some little mice and here's another snake over here and some more birds up here. I could do without the snakes, but they live in the swamp, so, you know, we have to be nice. One by one, they all crept from the bushes, the berries, and the waters of the swamp. There were four or five big old alligators and a couple of small ones, two yellow snakes and a blue one, 23 birds of a feather and a lazy possum and his wife. Well, that's not the possum. I don't see the possum. Let's see. And a great white heron. Maybe those are possums. I don't know. With all the creatures gathered around, and the little alligator began repeating what Creole was whispering to him. He told them all about the beauty of the early morning dawn and about the sunset over the swamp. He talked of love, beauty, and most of all, 
friendship. The animals were all amazed at what the little alligator was saying and how clearly he was saying it. For you see, when the alligator didn't have to make up what he said, he didn't stutter at all. Everything would have been all right had it not been for a nosy squirrel hmm, who happened to peek behind the bush that Creole was whispering from. The squirrel let out a yelp and shouted, Run as fast as you can! The big old ugly creature is back! Creole was so shocked at being discovered. She looked shocked. Look at that look on her face. Aw, poor baby. But she's so cute! that she tripped on the bush, scaring the creatures even more. Wait! Wait! she cried. I'm not going to hurt you. We just wanted to be your friends. But the creatures, well, they wouldn't listen. And scrambling over one another, they ran away. Uh-oh, now what? The little alligator chased after them, chased after them, shouting in a very clear voice, Stop! Creole is my friend, and she would not hurt anyone. Now the other creatures, who by this time were hidden in the bushes, listened to the little alligator, and suddenly a wise old owl spoke from the branches over a pine tree. I don't see the owl in the picture, but somewhere in that swamp there's an owl. Perhaps we should believe him, he said, for his ugly friend, Creole, has stopped him from stuttering. And sure enough, during the excitement of chasing the creatures, the little alligator hadn't stuttered one word. Poor Creole, she looks so sad. Well, let's see what happens. Sheepishly, that means they were a little bit embarrassed, and we've all been embarrassed when we've done something wrong and been caught you know, but everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Sheepishly, all the creatures went back to where Creole was sadly waiting. Creole, said the alligator, all of my fellow creatures of the swamp are sorry that they judged you by how you look. But if you will forgive them, they would love to hear you talk of all the happiness in your heart. And with a radiant smile, overcoming her tears, Creole hugged each other and every one of the creatures and made them all her friends. How about that? So, never judge someone by how they look, or a book by the way it's covered, for inside those tattered pages there's a lot to be discovered. Creole. Never judge a book by its cover. Sometimes we'll look at a book. Let me just give you an example and go, I don't want to read that book. It doesn't look good. But you know what? In this book, we find wonderful things. I love to find wonderful things. I find pictures of the world. I find places to go. I can teach you guys. And guess what? There are even pictures of places to go. Beautiful pictures. Interesting things to see. Interesting animals to learn about. Interesting people to meet. So don't judge a book by its cover, nor judge a person by how they look. Look into their heart. Smile at them first. Speak to them first. Say hello. You know what? Sometimes we don't know what a person is going through. They might be grumping around. You might see them at the grocery store. They're unhappy and they're grumping around. But perhaps they don't feel good. Or perhaps their best friend just moved away. Or perhaps they're just having a sad time in life. And that's going on a lot these days. So smile and be a friend. Always say please and thank you to people. Be a friend, be polite, 
doesn't matter what they look like. We can always be polite. Because you know what? God made all of us. And if we peel off our skin and look on the inside of our bodies, we're all just the same. We're all just the same. So here's my thought. Make it a day where you put on a smile, whether you're feeling happy or not, and be nice to people, okay? <clears throat> I'll see you tomorrow on Tuesday. Take care, everyone. Love you. Bye.